These aren't the droids we're looking for. Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome back to episode 4 of Space Engineers. So, what's this episode about? Well, first of all, I've built this massive fuel and retanker ship, I've built a radar dome, but first of all, we're going to show you what the inertia thrusters and turning them off actually does that was actually introduced in this latest patch I'm also going to give you some building tips and tricks because a lot of people have been asking me very simple questions and, and I was really puzzled why they didn't know how to do it so we'll just bring the hangar door down as fast as we can we've got the gunships in there I decided to go with the blue colour to match the station as someone said because I thought oh, I could repaint everything red but to be honest the red doesn't really look that good it looks pretty dangerous maybe but here we are, we'll get the engines on, engines are on, and we can just thrust out of here, like so. So, this is what you do, you press X, and basically it'll turn the dampeners off. This stops you from slowing down, so imagine you could cruise through space, and also you can rotate on the spot without being dampened, but say for instance I turn it back on, you can see the dampeners working there, the thrusters pushing off different ways. I could see a few uses for this, say you want to do a strafing run on that side of the hangar there, you turn your dampeners off and you can just hold the pattern like so and, and keep strafing, but moving on anyway, this is the new refueling ship, a ship that I built to transport fuel and resources either from or to the space station. So the concept of this was really simple, it was just to carry as much fuel as possible, no weapons, I'm still not sure on the green colour but it matches the resource section so that's why it is. The entrance is underneath. Now, this is the concept I want to talk about. I want to talk about breaching a ship. And in multiplayer, what's going to happen is this is how I think it'll work. First of all, you'll see the target, of course. They'll see you. And then it's a situation of who engages first. So let's say you spam all your rockets at each other. Both ships are damaged. There's two things that are going to happen. You're either going to try to get away or you're going to collide. So let's say you collide when you breach. So something to take in consideration is the thickness of your hull. How many blocks thick? If your block hull thickness is one, what's going to happen is the initial hit will penetrate the hull, so people will be able to breach your ship. Something else to think about is maybe misleading the other player. Something of a target for the other players is going to be your command center, and if you build your command center like on top, obviously it's going to be nice to have a nice view, but you're going to be very vulnerable. So this is the side entrance door. What I've also thought about as well is how you place your doors, so let's have a think about it. Okay, this is not a really important area, so people could technically breach it. I've put one door, and this for the cargo area is not that important, and, and as you can see on the left there, there is keypad lock, so maybe they'll introduce it so you can keypad lock different items. Another cargo storage area, that's the way up to the conning tower, and this is the engine room. As you can see, I've put three doors, because I believe that people will be able to blow up doors, but it might take a while, so three ways to save my engine room because people will either go for the engine room or they'll go for your command and control center so hiding the command and control center might be a wise idea so this is moving on to the medical center just a few medical rooms and then once again we've got a double door into the command center so this command center is not as simple as it looks this is double reinforced so it's three times three blocks so an initial impact will damage the outer two layers but the internal command center will be fine and that's what I really thought about. It's really about protecting your assets, of course. Here's crew quarters as well. Because you've got to think about, if someone breaches in a certain area, what will the damage be? If someone gets in, say, for the medical bay, they'll be right outside the command center, but I've got two doors to shield myself, and I can also protect it and be ready, because I'll hear one of the doors fall. On the other hand, I don't need that much protection in the cargo area, because there's nothing really I'm protecting, except, obviously, the loot that I've carried, but obviously you can organize a task force and actually deal with that. This is also a little bit of an escape chute, so down the hole, there we go. And you can see all the fuel rods and so on. But what I was thinking as well is ships that are built like this, you see how the engines are at the back, will players try to ram off your engines? Maybe take off your upper engines, take off your, damp your lower engines, because think about it. When you're building your ship, if you forget to put your up thrusters, down thrusters, you start drifting and you can cause a lot of damage and a lot of problems that way so it might be an idea to take off someone's engines or take out a certain area like there's a weak spot here in my ship I've told you now but I'm gonna probably fix this later is that if someone probably hits here this front end could just snap off and drift off into space where the engines are doing something completely different 
So that'll be definitely something I need to fix. And these are just ideas for you to actually contemplate and think about. So what I want to show you here now is I'm going to show you some of the controls people are asking me about. It's really surprising me that people didn't know about this. So you can hold control and drag a straight line. Most of you knew about that. But if you hold control and shift, you can drag multiple blocks like a floor like so and you can also drive like boxes like that and so on it just built speeds up building so much faster something else that people asked me how I was doing was coloring blocks like select, select the color by using the brackets keys on your keyboard so let's select green and basically what you do is if you don't want to replace the blocks because I saw a lot of people doing this to replace a green block all you have to do is press your middle mouse button and you can spray paint it and if you hold control and shift you can spray paint a big area like that, so it might save some time if you're building anything. So there's the Raker base anyway, there's not too many additions onto it. I'm working on that pop-up turret system still, and I'm working on a new way of docking ships. The radar dish is done on the advanced building tutorial, basically I'll link it in the description. The developers have released it, showing you how you could build moving objects and keep them moving in space using simply your cockpit and gyroscopes to get it spinning and then once it starts spinning it won't stop so what the actual concept behind this is is an infinite power imagine it in space once you start something going it's not gonna stop and this could be turning a motor which in turn creates power for the power station and that would power the rest of Raker base so there's some ideas to think about I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'm also gonna be working on some different ships I want really to know from you though if you'd like to see bigger ships being built, or you'd like to see smaller ships being built, or maybe more additions to the space station. Thanks for watching guys, and check out some of the other videos, and I'll see you some other time.